Dennis Prager here. Thanks for listening to the Daily Dennis Prager Podcast. To hear the entire three hours of my radio show, commercial-free, every single day, become a member of PragerTopia. You'll also get access to 15 years' worth of archives, as well as the daily show prep. Subscribe at PragerTopia.com. Hello, all. I'm Dennis Prager. I watched Elon Musk last night on with Tucker Carlson in a long interview. It is very, very rare that I am bowled over by a person's intellect. And I mean many very bright people. Elon Musk struck me as truly a, a person endowed with a, an awesome another term I rarely use, it's overused, you know, you you order a tuna sandwich, awesome, (laughs) I'll have a Diet Coke, awesome, that's awesome, so I don't use it much, I was, uh, I was simply blown away by his intelligence, this is not just an intelligence able to come up with the idea of a Tesla and by the way, is it Tesla or Tesla? Tesla, I think. It's That's what I thought. S, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know it's an S, but I uh, the pronunciation. Uh, and so not only in the sciences, not only in business, just about everything. He just has a commanding, towering intellect. And he has a charm. I, it was really eye-opening for me. Plus, he has, I would say, his batting average... On, on moral positions is uh, is very close to a thousand. This is a very uh, impressive man, Elon Musk, as it turns out. I mean, I don't know about his private life, nor frankly do I care. Uh, public figures' uh, private lives don't interest me, and don't tell me anything about their ability to affect the the society. That was my position on on. Bill Clinton, that was my position on Donald Trump. That is my position on on anyone. I don't know. I don't care about my surgeon's private life. I care about my surgeon's ability to perform surgery and should I need his or her services, that's all I care about. He is deeply worried about AI, and frankly, I am as well. Not many things worry me. I'd say the left and AI are are about the the big the big ones that I worry about. His worry was interesting. My worry was that they could simply be programmed to uh, do all sorts of destruction. That they can hack everything. They can change everything, uh, and eventually robots can be destructive. They can shoot down airplanes. I, I have no idea. Uh, uh, but the, the intelligence of artificial intelligence surpasses ours. The, the brain power, if you will. So I, uh, his worry was that it could be used for v- v- massive disinformation. And I had not thought about that as much as the other things that I mentioned I didn't quite follow, maybe you do, uh, what the uh, what the massive concern is. It, it, it can obviously put out things that sound like people put them out. That is clear. But I, I don't know how that will affect uh, media sites that will tell you the truth. In other words, will artificial intelligence take over every site? Is that possible? I mean, is that is that a fear that you don't know and I don't know? Okay. But on the assumption that it doesn't, then there will be a, a very similar issue, it seems to me, as to the one we have today, that there are sites that will give you a misinformation. 
I believe that they are overwhelmingly on the left. Uh, others will say they're on the right. Uh, I don't quite follow where that is true. When two years, you get a Pulitzer Prize for lying for two years about Russian collusion with the Trump campaign leading up to the 2016 election, <clears throat> it is uh, there is no comparable mainstream conservative lie. You will say, well, it's a lie that the, the election was stolen. That, it, that is the answer that leftists will give. Yes, but we don't know that that is a lie. We don't know that it's not a lie. or Well, we don't know that. We don't know either. I mean, if you're intellectually honest and you read about the amount of corruption in, in the 2020 election, the amount of change that was made in order to make it possible to cheat, even if, it, even if cheating did not take place, is unprecedented. The abolition of Election Day, the sending out of tens of millions of ballots, the harvesting of ballots, the closing down of counting in an unprecedented manner, and then coming back the next morning and announcing different results than last night. I mean, an honest person can say that an honest person can have doubts. So it's not the same as the Russian collusion, getting a Pulitzer Prize at the Washington Post and, and New York Times for an out-and-out lie, or for the 51 uh, intelligence officers, leaders, directors, saying that the Hunter Biden laptop story was Russian disinformation. That was an out-and-out lie. It was as much a lie as saying that the sky is green. Anyway, uh, as long as there are organs that are not suppressed, and this is something that Elon Musk deserves incredible credit for, taking Twitter from a censor machine uh, and making it a, a much more open place where you are not generally censored because of your opinion. If you if you write that your child should not be given a COVID vaccine, you would have been taken off from Twitter for misinformation. It's misinformation to say all children should have a COVID vaccine. It's misinformation to say that children should stay out of school for two years. We, we were buried in misinformation. And the people who gave truth, as usual, the dissenters, were suppressed. So much for AI. They did an interesting test. I don't know where it was. I took it. They, they had a few sentences produced by artificial intelligence, and they had the, the, a few sentences on the same theme, same language, same language, essentially, produced by a human being, and vote which you thought was the artificial intelligence, which you thought was the person. I got it right. Uh, this is no knock on, on AI's ability to write well, but there, there was a... Uh, I don't know how to put it, a uh, staccato type language. It, it, it is truly ineffable, in, inexpressible, how I perceived the difference, but it, it was perceived. So welcome to the show. <laughs> welcome to the modern age where in... in I feel bad for kids. I really do. I feel bad. The, the debt that we are leaving them. You know, what, what is what is our current national debt? What is How many trillions? Do you know? 31. Sorry? 31. $31 trillion. It's, it's, I talk about ineffable. That's ineffable and inexpressible. But that's not honest. Do you know how many uh, uh, pensions are owed? I mean, well, that's not counted. No. It's unbelievable. That that brings it to like eighty trillion. We're leaving that to the next generation, and the nobody talks about it because the the debt is does not bother the left. It doesn't bother some on the right either, but it those that are bothered by it are almost all on the right. 
I, I feel for the kids because nothing seems real. They may not be a boy. They may not be a girl. I mean, that's fundamental. That's, that's the rock of Gibraltar, your sex. And, and a very important part of whom, whom, of who you are. And now artificial intelligence will outsmart you? It's, uh, it's, it's a challenging time for young people. 1 8 Prager 776. You're listening to The Dennis Prager Show. The Dennis Prager Show. Every day when I pass a mirror, I still can't believe it. It's me. I'm looking back at myself. I never thought I'd be this fit again. But 42 pounds ago, I decided to take control of my health. And with the help of my PhD weight loss and nutrition, I'm so glad I did. The program is simple. Dr. Ashley Lucas and her amazing team customize a plan for your body to make it simple. They even provide 80% of your food at no additional cost. They treat your entire person as one. Dr. Ashley believes that all change starts with the mind. She'll help you to change your behavior when it comes to food and think differently about food so you'll never gain the weight back. Give them a call right now at 864-644-1900 and they can answer all your questions. If I can do it, you can do it. All right, let's go to Michael in Colorado Springs. Hello, Michael. Ah, good morning. Hi. Um, the Forgive me if I get your exact words wrong, but you said something to the effect that there was no example from right-wing media that compares to the lies given by left-wing media. In about an hour, uh, opening statements are going to be made by the lawyers for the Dominion voting systems in their lawsuit against Fox News. The judge has already ruled that the claims the network made about the about 2020 election fraud involving Dominion voting machines were clearly false. Clearly was his word. Um, you like to be clear. You value clarity above agreement. I say the truth is not a Fox News value. I think I think the truth is more a Fox News value than a, an MSNBC value or a New York Times value. That uh, what that there were guests on Fox who said that they believed that the Dominion machines had been tampered with uh, it is an opinion that people offered. Uh, if it, Was it ever, I simply don't know and I'll trust you, was it ever offered as a news story Dominion corrupted its machines in the 2020 election intentionally? Rupert Murdoch said that a number of Fox News hosts endorsed the claim. That was his well, word. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. What is it? So, in other words, they had a guest and they said, right, yeah, uh-huh. I, I'm, I'm not challenging you. I, I'm, I, I admit That's that right. I don't follow every detail of this case. I, I know that people on Fox offered that opinion. And I don't, and I, I believe that they believed that it was true. So we get, and I ask this about people on the left: when you think something is true, are you lying or are you simply making a mistake? Uh, I thought that the Russian collusion story, going on as long as it did, when it was fabricated by their own people, was a lie. Do you? Will we agree on that? Um. I don't know. The Fox News had guests on whose sources spoke to the wind, um, who traveled in time. Uh, I don't know whether you've been reading the stuff that's been coming out. Um, on, it's on, not reported on I'm on sorry, on, on what? On, I'm sorry? On, on what subject? I'm sorry. I've, you you asked on, if I've been on, reading something. On what subject? about the depositions that have been made uh, leading up to this trial, the depositions of uh, the Fox hosts and uh, Rupert Murdoch. No, you're right. I have not read them. Anyway, let us say, okay, let let us say, I never say that no conservative 
has lied. I've never said such a thing. What I say is that truth is not a left-wing value. If they lied, if they made it up out of whole cloth that Dominion cheated, then they lied. Okay, or or at least they made a, a, a completely unprovable at this time error. I do. I personally believe cheating took place. Whether they took place with the Dominion machines, I have never said Dominion machines and Dominion worked to subvert the election. So uh, I, I I stand by my claim that truth is not a left wing value. When when they announce that uh, sex is not binary, I have to say I believe that the the damage to the society with that lie is so much greater than saying Dominion machines Dominion tampered with its with its machines. I think, would you agree with me on that? No. I see. So telling kids you might really not be a boy, you might really not be a girl, does not do damage to children. Undermining the confidence of the American Oh, I have no confidence. All right, I, 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 can't, I plead guilty. I have no confidence. than one or two kids. I'm sorry, sir, you asked me. Yeah, one or two kids. The, the entire uh, 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 educational establishment is now on board that you're not a boy or a girl unless you think so. What are you talking about, one or two kids? I don't know how many kids there are. Forgive me for... No, 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 no. You're not, you're not following my, my argument. Whether or not... Whether, large, the, whether, you ask me what I've meant about one or two kids. I do not believe that there is a, a significant fraction of the American youth who are confused about their gender. Gender. Oh, I believe. I be well, uh, look, the numbers are astronomical, and uh, in terms of the past, uh, yes. What are they? They are now. Uh, I for, I don't know the percentage, but we have gone from virtually zero to ten percent of kids now saying they are L G B or T. This is an an enormous increase in the in three years. Also, even kids who are who identify with their sex are being confused. They're being told that there are more than two sexes, and that doesn't trouble you, and you don't think that's a lie. What I said was that the undermining the faith of the country, which you were doing because you that's say correct. you correct. No, no, right. Well, why is that a lie? I don't know. How do you know that that is a lie? You believe that, that there was no cheating in 2020? Tell me, are you prepared to swear on whatever you hold as holy? That you know for a fact there was no cheating in the 2020 election. Say that to me. Oh, there was. There were there were a number of people in the villages who voted for Trump. Multiple okay, times. so it was only it was only right wing not, cheating. I'm there was sorry, no sir. there was no left wing cheating. You're prepared to say that. I won't even argue with you. I want you to affirm what you're telling me. I will. I'll be happy to. I do not think that there was a significant amount of cheating. Wait, you do not think? Side. Wait, 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 wait. So it's an opinion. Let me define my word, please. By significant, I mean enough to swing in any election. Okay, okay. So the debate between us is how significant left-wing cheating was. Okay, that's a very important movement in our discussion. I'm glad you called, and I mean that, and you know that. We shall return in a moment. When running a business, your employees can create all kinds of interesting situations, like getting complaints because someone on the team always smells horrible. You better talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, You'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Dennis Prager under podcast when you sign up. Spelled B-A-M-B-E-E dot com, Bambi.com, type in Dennis Prager. Hello, everybody. Dennis Prager here. I have a guest on the phone. I'm sure he's not happy that he is so well known for one picture, but such is life. The man photographed with his foot on Nancy Pelosi's desk. 
is my guest. He has been released from jail pending a, another trial, I believe. It's another. He's, been, he's been convicted. Right, but it says pending trial in January 6th Capitol riot. That's the headline in the Washington What's Post, April 27th. Or excuse me, April, uh, oh, you're right, 2001. My <laughs> 2001, 2021. I mean, 2021. Okay, so, we'll, well, anyway, we'll find out. Uh, all the details, because he's on the line. Richard Barnett. Uh, hello, Richard. Welcome to the Dennis Prager Show. Hi, Dennis. Thank you for having me on. It's an honor to be on with the Patriots. Thank you, sir. So let's uh, let's get a few uh, facts clear for everybody. What is? How long were you were you in prison? Um, uh, as of January the. 8th, 2021, I was in prison for roughly four and a half months and have been out on home arrest ever since, house arrest ever since. What does house arrest mean? Uh, well, it depends on the judge and the negotiation with the uh, with the defendant. And mine happens to be that I am on my property. I do live in the Ozark Mountains in North Arkansas. I've got eight acres here. And so I'm allowed on my property. Out, some people came and leave the, their, the inside of their home, but I was able to negotiate that I can be on my property because I have to maintain it. And also, uh, I am allowed a 50 mile radius of my home for work only. Of course, I can't walk in a restaurant. I can't. I can pretty much do my work and stop and fuel my gas tank. And for how long is, will that last? How long is the conviction? Or the punishment. Well, I've got to back up a little bit to clarify something. I heard you say it, say it. I've already been to trial. And, of course, my trial was in D.C. Uh, uh, yeah, I haven't been sentenced yet. I want to be careful how I word things. But then again, the truth is the truth. Uh, it was the most ridiculous uh, 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 example of, of, I can't even use the word justice, to be honest with you. Uh, in D.C., I, my my jury was uh, 12 liberals, uh, a very uh, uh, one-sided prosecutor. Um, we'll get into all that later in a really bad situation. I, I I mean, I was so disappointed in what I thought was, was, a, was a just legal system. It's not, or at least not for us. Um, I was found guilty of four felonies and four misdemeanors. And I am facing up to, if they really wanted to load me up, I'm facing up to 47 years in prison. It's 63 years old. I've uh, been a pillar of my community my whole life, a hard worker, uh, no criminal record whatsoever. Why were you released? Uh, I, I was released pending sentencing, which is a normal thing. Uh, you have to argue for it, and, and this particular judge agreed that I was not a flight risk and that I'd, I followed every rule during the two years uh, up to my trial on, on my work release. And uh, uh, and so he decided to go ahead and continue that le- uh, that until sentencing. And my new sentencing date is uh, coming up soon. It's May 24th. So you might actually return to prison? Uh, May 24th, I go for sentencing, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to prison. Uh, I'm just not sure for how long. What did you do? Uh, well, basically, I didn't do anything. I mean, uh, the short version is, and I know we don't have a lot of time, is I showed up at the Capitol to uh, to uh, uh, attend a protest in a speech by Donald Trump, which I did. Uh, afterwards, they had post out, they had passed out flyers showing there was going to be a secondary rally at the Capitol. A lot of people don't understand this, and so myself and my friends decided we would walk past the Capitol on the way back to our hotel and see what that was all about. We did so, and when I arrived at the Capitol, when everybody else went down to the Capitol steps, we walked around on the grass, uh, planned on heading back to our hotel. When all of a sudden we witnessed the Metro Police and several other departments attacked this innocent crowd with tear gas and flashbangs. Uh, at that point, I didn't know this at the time because you find out a lot after the fact, uh, two gentlemen died right there of heart attacks, Benjamin Phillips at 105 and Kevin Greeson at 128, and they set one of them on fire. But the police were literally attacked. It was a total setup. And so I guess I'm a retired firefighter and many other things, and so I have PTSD. I guess my PTSD kicked in. 
And when the police I saw attack ran past me, I ran beside them and yelled at them they weren't patriots. And what were they doing? Apparently, that's a horrible, horrible crime to, to, to exercise your First Amendment rights when you see someone being attacked. All right, hold on there. I am staying on with you. I, 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 sure. I, I, I think that this is important for people to hear. So the man who you know for having his feet up on Nancy Pelosi's desk is my is my guest. Hello, everybody. I'm speaking with Richard Barnett. He's in at home. He has to be at home because he's under house arrest. The man whom you know from the photograph from January 6th with his feet up on Nancy Pelosi's desk. He's a lifelong firefighter. He has no criminal record whatsoever. Whatever you think about what he did, those are relevant and we'll find out what he did. So let me review what I have heard from you. You went to uh, Washington, D.C. to hear President Trump speak. You were then given a flyer that there will be a, another demonstration at the U.S. Capitol. You saw a, a peaceful group being attacked by some police. Is that correct? Is everything I said accurate? That is accurate, sir. Okay. Did you have any intention of entering the Capitol when you went to it? No, sir, I did not. So how did that transpire? Well, when I saw the the police attacking the innocent crowd, and I might add, too, because there's so much out there, when we approached the Capitol, there were no barricades or signs. The little flyer said that the, the, the secondary protest was going to be held on the Capitol grounds. So just to clarify that up, anyway. Uh, so after I witnessed the police with a, my two friends were with me, we all witnessed it and a few other people, uh, the, the crowd being attacked, a good handful of the police came running past us on the northwest corner of the building. And when they did, I was pretty worked up seeing that because I've been a firefighter and, and most of my friends are almost police officers and good people. And it just it blew my mind to see police doing that. Uh, especially after two years of watching them let Antifa burn our country down. But anyway, uh, I started, I was upset. I started running beside the police officers. They were running in line, and I I started running beside them and mouthing them, telling them they weren't patriots, and what are they doing, and why are you attacking these innocent people? And I realized I'd lost my friends I was with, so I climbed up the steps to look for my friends. Uh, Short version is, there's a big scuffle down at the bottom of the steps, and everybody started rushing the steps. There were thousands of people behind me. Uh, I believe there's a video of somebody opening a door from the inside to actually open out, not in. And I've got video of myself getting shoved into the Capitol. Obviously, I didn't go in there voluntarily. We've shown the video, but nobody within our quote, quote, legal system seems to care. And uh, so once I was in, because they had removed all the bathrooms the night before, and we had millions of people with nowhere to go to the restroom all day, I thought, well, I'm pushed in. I might as well find a restroom. Instead of finding the restroom, I found Nancy Pelosi's office. I didn't know it was her office at the time until the photographer showed up with AP and asked me if I knew, if I knew where I was and would I pose for a photograph. And, uh, well, the rest is history. But you also left her a note. Is that correct? That is correct. And what what but did you write? These- what did you write on the note? Yeah, all these things are, are uh, First Amendment, though. I did, I never harmed anybody. I wasn't charged with anything violent. And the note was almost just everything going on, your mind racing and going crazy and you being upset. Uh, when I was asked to leave, I jotted a note down for it. It's very simple. There's nothing wrong with it. It simply said, and I hope you don't mind because we're, you know, we're on public radio or television, it said, Nancy Big O was here, you biatch. Big O is your Big O is your nickname. Did you spell out? Did you spell out the B word? Yes, I did. Okay. It was spelled out B I A T C H. It was almost more of a joke. I okay. I see uh, B I A T C H. But at the same time, even writing a note, was no, there's no charge. For no, that. no. I, so, what were you charged with? Four felonies and four misdemeanors. The first one, which is one that's been up for debate and been to the Supreme Court and everything, is a 1512 charge, which is, uh, 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 oh gosh, uh, 
yeah, man, so much. I, I cover so much. Uh, uh, Interrupting an official proceeding, the, the terminology is not interrupting, but interrupting an official proceeding, basically the same thing that the three people just did in the Tennessee uh, co- Congress down there. The second charge was uh, entering the capital of capital grounds with a dangerous weapon. The third one was entering uh, the capital of capital grounds, period, without whether you had a dangerous weapon or not. The other one was uh, uh, civil disorder. With the civil disorder charge, we've argued it, too. Basically, they're saying that by me being at the Capitol, one of the aspects of that civil disorder is I have to have inter, uh, interrupted interstate commerce. So basically, that charge is saying that they're five miles away. There was a grocery store that lost a couple of hundred dollars worth of business by me being at the Capitol that day. And that's a five-year charge. Did you, did you bring anything in? I read that you brought an axe in. No. Uh, yeah, let me let me back up. It's hard because I do a lot of interviews. I, I realize people don't know uh, or hear my other interviews. The day the, before I went, I went online to see because, you know, a lot of us were concerned. I'm 62 years old. I was 61 at the time. A lot of us were concerned about getting attacked by S and people while we were in D.C. And so I looked up online to see if what was allowed for protection on D.C. They have the record. I looked it up. And you could not take, you know, obviously guns. I didn't know at the time because I'm in Arkansas. We're a Second Amendment right state. I can, I can't now, but before I could legally wear a firearm anywhere I went in Arkansas, you know, in the grocery store, anywhere else. And many of us do. It's our Second Amendment right, you know. And so anyway, I looked it up. You couldn't have a gun, but right there it said you can have a stun gun. So I thought, well, I should take a stun gun with me. And it was all about protecting myself from Antifa. And I went and found a stun gun. It was also a dual walking stick flashlight. So I thought, well, great. I'm going to be doing all walking. I'm older. Uh, I'll have a walking stick. So I was wearing that on my hip. Uh, the night before, um, not sure why, but the batteries weren't working in it. So when I showed up at the Capitol, it wasn't even working anyway. And I've got proof of that, but they don't seem to care about that either. But I was wearing, I'm not like I forgot I even had it on. It folds up to a short little thing and you can pull it out for a walking stick. I was wearing it when I got pushed into the Capitol. Never pulled it out. Never showed any signs of wanting to use it. To be honest with you, I forgot it was even on my side. Uh, and that's what they're calling the danger. Okay, stuff. we're going to continue. Richard Barnett is my guest. I'm Dennis Prager. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better, Mike Lindell with my pillow is launching the MyPillow 2.0. When Mike invented MyPillow, it had everything you could ever want in a pillow. Now, nearly 20 years later, he discovered a new technology that makes it even better. The MyPillow 2.0 has the patented adjustable fill of the original MyPillow, and now with a brand new fabric that is made with a temperature-regulating thread. The MyPillow 2.0 is the softest, smoothest, and coolest pillow you'll ever own. For my listeners, the MyPillow 2.0 is buy one, get one free offer with promo code Prager. MyPillow 2.0 temperature regulating technology is 100% made in the USA and comes with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money-back guarantee. Just go to MyPillow.com and click on the radio listeners square to the buy one, get one free offer. Enter promo code Prager or call 800-761-6302 to get your MyPillow 2.0 now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Dennis Prager Show, or back to. I just spoke for quite a while, last segment of the show, the last hour of the show, I should say, with Richard Barnett, a lifelong firefighter in Arkansas, who's under house arrest, and he will probably go back to prison. He's the man who put his feet on Nancy Pelosi's desk in that very infamous photo. And he may be put away for quite some time. And I think about the criminals released by judges and district attorneys on the left who then go on to do more and more crime. I mean, true threats to society. Richard Barnett is not a threat to society. He did not take part in insurrection. He was not charged with insurrection. Not a single person January 6th has been charged with insurrection. So they call it something that they are not 
charging people with because they have, from the very first day, decided to use January 6th the way uh, others have used, like the fascists in Germany used the Reichstag fire as a way to suppress more and more dissent in the country. That's, that's the analogy. There's no other analogy here to concentration camps or anything like that. But the use of one uh, bad thing, as it were, to suppress liberty is the characteristic of a, of a tyranny. And this country is moving towards Soviet tyranny with great rapidity, with Soviet-style judges, Soviet-style district attorneys, Soviet-style treatment of political prisoners, Soviet-style having political prisoners. Now, it is very easy to ignore it because people don't like to confront evil. They hate it. I have said all of my life, even before I began broadcasting 40 years ago, that evil is not dark. Evil is so bright that people cannot stare at it. You can look at evil. You can look, at, excuse me, at darkness. You can't look at extremely bright light. Somebody then pointed out some time ago that that's how Lucifer got his name, that it does come, I believe, from light. An interesting observation. People do not confront. They don't even recognize. Forget confront. That takes courage. People don't even recognize evil. I had a man on last hour who differed with me, and I, we had him on for a, I had him on for a while. And uh, he, when I said to him that the lie that there were more than two sexes is has been horribly damaging to so many young American children, he said, "Well, well how many trans are there? Two, three, four? What? I believe I'm paraphrasing him accurately." So I looked it up. I said to him, according to what I knew, 10% of high school kids now say they're LGBTQ, for up from uh, at most 3% just a few years ago. The, the increase is socially induced. Actually, we looked it up. What was the number, 14%? 22. 22%? And, and, and who gave that number? CDC. The, the CDC. One out of every five kids in America, in high school middle, or middle school, says he or she is lesbian, lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender, or queer. One out of five. Wow. So 20%, I'm sorry, I, I, or 22%. 22. 22%. And I'm sure it's rising. This doesn't bother liberals in the least. They're bothered by January 6th. Well, we are measured by that which infuriates us just as much as we are measured by anything else. This is a test. Much of life is a test of our character. This is one of them. If you bury your head in the sand about what is being done to young Americans with regard to the most fundamental identity a human has, their sex, uh, then you have chosen to be. You have chosen to dismiss it from your consciousness and preoccupy yourself with charges about dominion machines. Let us say that was a pure lie. Let's just say, I don't, I don't, I don't say, I, it may be entirely mistaken, I don't believe it was a pure lie, it doesn't matter. Let's say you believe it is a pure lie. Which has done more damage to the society? What is being done to kids now so that 22% of them, according to the CDC, identify as LGBTQ in high school and middle school? Uh, Or uh, the charge that uh, was made by some, I, I, I am well aware of all charges with regard to cheating in on the 2020 election. As regards uh, Dominion, I am I, I have no knowledge because I, I don't know without hacking how those machines could be 
uh, sources of, of cheating. I will say this, whoever decided to go from paper ballots to uh, computers did this country a staggering disservice. It's a classic example of change for change's sake. Physical ballots are far safer. One-day elections are far safer. Not sending out vast millions of ballots to people who didn't request them is far safer. Having people show an ID like they do to get a drink or, or to fly on an airplane or so many other things, is far safer. The Democrats have done everything possible to make cheating easy. That, if you deny, you are lying to yourself. We can, we can differ on whether there was cheating in 2020, and certainly whether it was determinative in the election or not. But you cannot deny that the Democrats have done everything possible to make cheating easy. The people in, in, in prison, like John Mellis, he has not even been given a bail hearing for January 6th. And they're being charged with one statute under tampering with witnesses, which is very serious, and tamp- or tampering with items in, in, in a criminal trial. This there's one little section that says, let me get those words for you, uh, and on that basis, these people can go to prison for up to 20 years. Let's see here. Mm. The title of the statute is about witness tampering and hiding destroying evidence. There's one line there about obstructing a public uh, a meeting. It, it, it's, uh, I have to get the, uh, here I have the code actually here from Cornell University. Unfortunately, needless to say, there it is. So U.S. Code Section 1512, tampering with a witness victim or an informant. Now, you will then say, what what does that have to do with January 6th? And the answer is nothing. But there is a tiny, tiny line in there with regard to uh, a a, a federal meeting, meeting or meeting. And that's the whole thing. On, On that basis... They are being told that they are. They may go to prison for twenty years. As I said, here it is. Who, uh, whoever corruptly obstructs, influences, or impedes any official proceeding, or attempts to do so shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 20 years or both. Corruptly obstructs, influences, or impedes any official proceeding. Whoa. How did that get into that? Isn't that interesting? What's that have to do with witness tampering? Nothing. If that is the issue, then... then the, the guys in Atlantic should be in prison for 20 years. The guy brings a bullhorn and starts screaming at the, uh, did you see? The, oh, Na- that was Nashville? I thought it was, you're right, Nashville, sorry. Yeah, in Tennessee. In Tennessee. They, they, why wasn't that corruptly uh, obstructing a public proceeding? You can't bring a bullhorn in and start shouting into it. They, they did disrupt it. Hi, everybody. You're listening to the Dennis Prager Show. Um, Glenview, Illinois. Jeannie, hello. Hi, Dennis. Hi. I must tell you, listening to you is music to my ears. Your powerful intellect is amazing. 
right up there with how you described Elon Musk today. Now, I need your help. I work hard for Trump. I compile packets with all of his accomplishments for those who hate him and don't know the facts. I've won a couple people over in the past. However, now in my area, these people here are blaming Trump for January 6th, the deaths that occurred, and for those that were injured. It's my understanding that he asked for the National Guard to be out there, and Pelosi said no. What I need to know is how can I refute the people that are blaming Trump for this horrible crisis? Mm -hmm. So when we say deaths, to the best of my knowledge, not a single person died because of the pro-Trump demonstrators who were there. There were people who had heart attacks at that day or the following day. And uh, I remember the officer who was, they said was killed by being beaten by a fire extinguisher. Do you, you recall that? Yes. Okay, it never happened. Oh, my. You, you, you should tell your friends that. And if, if they, they, that they truly can look up. Uh, uh, what, yes. Sicknick was his name, Officer Sicknick. Brian Sicknick, Brian Sicknick yeah. So nobody okay, was, would... the, the people who, uh, there were officers who died, but not because anybody killed them. At, that, so I when people say died, important. yes, and, and, and in fact, uh, the death of, for example, the, the woman who uh, was climbing through a window and not hitting anybody or hurting anybody. She was murdered. She w it's not even fair to say she was killed. She was murdered. Uh, a, a person who had served the country uh, and, and unarmed, to the best of my knowledge. So people have to get it right. Look, I salute you for trying to convert people who hate Trump. Uh, 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 I just... Yeah, go on. You know, when they don't have the facts, if they have the facts and hate Well, them, right. So as I wrote in my column today, my Tuesday column, truth is the antidote to the left. That, that, is, that is exactly correct. Kryptonite is to Superman what truth is to the left. The hatred of Donald Trump is understandable. People hate people who have obnoxious traits, and he has some obnoxious traits. Okay. What is not understandable and not admirable is not voting for someone because you happen not to like him. I don't really give a damn if you like him. The question is, do you like America? Do you believe Joe Biden has done more good for America? The collapse in, internationally and domestically as a result of his policies? The damage the man has done? The chaos in the world that has ensued as a result of his presidency? Because they know this country is led by, at best, a wimp, and at worst, an anti-American destroyer. The Chinese know this, the Russians know this. Neil Ferguson, one of the greatest living historians, even acknowledged by liberals, leftists I don't think do, was at Harvard, is now at the, the Hoover Institution at Stanford. I asked on this show, would Putin directly, I had no idea what he would say, would Putin have invaded Ukraine if Donald Trump were president? Answer, no. And that is correct. There is no doubt in my mind, because we have no reason to doubt it. When, when Trump was president, Putin did not invade Ukraine. He was scared of Trump. I'm scared of Biden. Excuse me. Yes, I'm scared of Biden. Putin is not scared of Biden. That's the irony. I am far more afraid of Joe Biden than Vladimir Putin is or than the Chinese Communist Party head Xi is. That's the irony of life. 
more Americans are afraid of Joe Biden than bad leaders on earth are afraid of him. That's not a good scenario. But feelings are so powerful that in the great majority of humans, they dominate. Reason does not dominate. I hate Trump. Therefore, no matter what good he has done for the country, like, for example, starting to build a wall, why is that wrong? Is it good that millions upon millions of people come into this country illegally? Is it good that we have Biden supporting DAs who let horrible human beings out of prison or do not even put them in prison in the first place? I just read of a story of a man released by a a left-wing judge and uh, immediately went and, and stabbed a woman to death. I think it was the next day. I really want to report that case to you, in fact, because I want the judge's name known. I have to I have to look that story up and bring it to you. One eight Prager seven seven six. We continue the Dennis Prager Show. Hey, it's the Ultimate Issues Hour, everybody. I'm Dennis Prager. Third hour every Tuesday, some great issue of life. It's more important than ever because none of these ultimate issues are discussed or taught. That's where wisdom lies in ultimate issues. It's very important. Anyway, welcome to the show. We discuss the great issues of life. Today, it was pure coincidence that I chose Tuesday for the Ultimate Issues Hour. Coincidence because for 20 years, Tuesday has been the day my weekly column appears. And I I really, really ask you to sign up. Go to DennisPrager.com and you'll just get it every Tuesday It is an ongoing analysis of the world in which we live, my weekly column. Today, I I don't usually use, I rarely use my column as the subject of the Ultimate Issues Hour, but today I am. Slavery, the Left, and Truth. That's the title of the piece. It is uh, the number two trending piece on Town Hall. But you, so you can go there or get it at DennisPrager.com where you can automatically get my column every Tuesday. This is free, obviously. I don't write it for money. I write it because, like this column, it is important to tell people truths about issues to, about which they are lied to. So I deal with the lies and give you some truths that, in many cases, blow people's minds. They they just can't believe it. For example, and I'm, I'm going to read the column to you. It's, it's not long. I mean, it's a thousand or nine hundred or a thousand words. And that's it. Obviously, it's a column. How many Americans know, even roughly, just roughly, how many black Africans were were kidnapped and transported, I might add, in those hell ships to America, including America before it became the United States. The whole time, the whole time that whites have lived in America, how many Africans were imported as slaves into the United States? both pre-United States and post-United States. I, I wish I could get instantaneous responses from callers. My suspicion is, tell me if you agree with me, my suspicion is if I, I went on a campus, we should send, uh, who's going on campuses these Aldo. days? I'm sorry? Aldo, Aldo is. Oh, he's, he's wonderful. He's the new Will Witt, as it were. Compliment to both of them. 
I would like him to just say, how many slaves do you think were imported into the U.S. from Africa in its whole history? I, I don't believe you would get an answer under a million from more than 10% of the students. Uh, I would be shocked if you got it from 10% of the students, a number under a million. And there should be a follow-up, right? How many do you think came... Oh, it should be a follow up. How many? How many you think? How many do you think came to other countries in the Western Hemisphere? Is that what you mean? Well, that would. Oh, 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 the, oh! My other point. Yeah. How many do you think came here voluntarily to immigrate to the United States? Exactly. Anyway, the number I had always quoted three hundred twenty thousand. Actually, the best number that they have come up with. Let's see here. Let me do a fine on the number three. Is 305,326. In all of American history, including pre-1776, the number of Africans that were imported into the United States is uh, 305,326. Now, the number of black slaves other countries imported from Africa into the rest of the New World, meaning the Caribbean and South America, guess what number that is? So, again, imported not by the U.S., by other countries like Spain, Portugal, Britain, into the Caribbean and South America. That, that is the rest of Caribbean is, I guess, another way of saying Central America. That's not technically referred to as Central America. How many slaves were brought into Latin America? That might be the best phraseology. By other countries during the same period that 305,000 were brought into the United States. How many do you think? Three million Two million, five million, six, seven, eight, nine million, ten million, eleven million, (laughs) twelve and a half million. You know how many times that is? So that's forty times the number of slaves. Forty were brought into other countries in in the Western Hemisphere. That's the hemisphere we live in, in case you went to college and didn't learn it. That's an, I'd like to, he, Aldo should ask that question. What hemisphere is the United States located in? I'll bet you they wouldn't know what he's asking. I wonder if they would even know the term New World. What does the term New World mean? In other words, I don't think that most college students know anything. They know preferred pronouns. Every civilization throughout history had slaves. Asian societies, Africans, Native Americans, and other indigenous peoples around the world and the Muslim Arab world, which may have had the most slaves of all. There was only one thing unique about slavery in the West. It raised the issue of the morality of slavery, ferociously debated it, and finally abolished it there, before it was abolished by any other civilization. If you care about moral truth, Rather than, for example, promoting America hatred, you must recognize and you must teach that America was one of the first slaveholding societies to abolish slavery. This even includes Africa. Cornell professor Sandra Green, a black scholar of African history, notes, quote, Slavery in the United States ended in 1865, 
but in West Africa, it was not legally ended until 1875, and then it stretched on unofficially until almost World War I. In other words, the whites of the United States abolished slavery before the blacks of Africa, or at least West Africa, abolished slavery of other Africans. Now, how many students at Harvard know that? I know the answer, and you know the answer. Zero. I have a better one. How many professors at Harvard know that? I would say the answer is extremely close to zero, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's zero. Part of the left's mission is to make you ignorant, and they've succeeded. We shall return, 1-8 Prager, 776. My subject is my column today, and I really beg you, because it's... uh, It's so good to have these columns go out to as many people as possible to subscribe. It's free at DennisPrager.com to my column each week. And this week it is Slavery, the Left, and Truth, or Slavery, the Truth, and the Left. What is the title, actually? (laughs) Slavery, the Left, and Truth. uh, Here's another urging, begging, send this column out to as many young people as you can so that they'll understand that they're, they are bathing in lies about the United States of America. People ask me all the time, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? So that's what you can do. Send out a column like this to 10 young people you know, nieces, nephews, grandchildren, sons, daughters, Friends of your friends, sons of your daughters, friends of your daughters, sons of your daughters, cousins of your in-laws. Okay, you got the point? It's at uh, the columns up at DennisPrager.com, at Town Hall, and elsewhere. All right. So, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm talking to you. For I, I began with the point that's in, in the middle of the article, and I'm now reading the article, and that is how, how many slaves were brought into the United States throughout its history from pre-U.S., 305,000. And 12 million to other places in uh, in the Western Hemisphere. Okay. Who ended slavery? There was only one thing unique about slavery in the West, and that is it was abolished for any other civilization. If you care about moral truth rather than promoting America hatred, you must recognize and you must teach that America was one of the first slave-holding societies to abolish slavery. Then I go on to quote a black professor of history at Cornell that slavery in the U.S. was abolished before slavery was abolished in West Africa from where we got the slaves. Yeah, isn't that something? White people in America abolished slavery over black Africans before black Africans abolished slavery over black Africans. Whoa. Bet you you didn't know that. And that's a black professor at an Ivy League college who said that. That was a good one I dug up. According to the authoritative slavevoyages.org, the total number of black slaves imported from Africa to America was 305,326. The number of black slaves other countries imported from Africa into the rest of the New World was 12,521,337. In other words, other countries imported 41 times the number of black slaves into the Western Hemisphere than the United States did, including the years before American independence. Yet the American left never mentions this important moral point, because the left-controlled education system suppresses facts it finds inconvenient, 
and the left is not interested in morality or truth, but in vilifying America. And then there is Arab-slash-Muslim enslavement of blacks. Professor Paul Lovejoy, in his Transformations in Slavery, A History of Slavery in Africa, Cambridge University Press, 2012, reveals that from the beginning of Islam in the 7th century through the year 1600, the estimated number of Africans enslaved by Muslims was, take a guess, folks, it's more than 305,000. That's right. Seven million. How many students in America know that? The Arab Muslim world, seven million till 1600. After 1600, it was about a million more a year. So then it became eight million in 1700 and nine million in 1800 and 10 million by 1900. How's that? So why is America lacerated for slavery when it was so universal and so much more common elsewhere? And vast numbers didn't die to abolish it like we did. It doesn't defend slavery. It defends the United States, which implicitly was uniquely evil. How many, for example, know that a great percentage of the African male slaves of the, of the Muslims were castrated so that they could not have families? Did you know that? That's why there are so few black, uh, black Arabs. If they weren't castrated, there would be a vast number of black Muslims, black Arabs. Well, there are black Muslims in, in uh, non-Arab areas of Africa where Islam spread. Yeah, they didn't castrate the males in America. Black slaves built America. This is another lie of the left. Those who make this argument point to the lucrative cotton manufacturing and trade in the 19th century, the industry in which black slaves were primarily used in the American South. But the University of Illinois professor of economics, Deidre McCloskey, answered this. And I will give you the answer to blacks built America when we return. Hi everybody, Dennis Prager here. I wish every uh, college student in America could hear this broadcast today. I wish they could hear everyone. And millions do, in fact, hear Prager U. But this one in particular, I should do a Prager U video on it, on slavery. Slavery is used for for one reason, not to teach about slavery. They don't teach about slavery. They teach about American perfidy, how disgusting America is. That is the point of the left. The point of the left has always been to dismantle the United States. That is the only reason that they lie so much about slavery. The way they teach it is to smear America, not to tell you the truth about slavery. They lie, and they lie, and they lie, and they lie again. They lie so much that they think they're telling the truth. The facts that I'm giving you now, the numbers, these are unknown. They're unknown to black history majors, let alone to the typical kid at college, let alone high school. Such as this lie that I deal with in my column, please send this column to every young person you know. Maybe every middle aged or older person, too. It's at DennisPrager.com. Slavery, the left, and truth. Blacks built America. Black slaves built America. Or blacks built America. This is now as, as given as sex is not binary. And it's as big a lie. 
So here's a response to the notion, because it's based on cotton and the importance of cotton to the economy of the West and the United States, and slaves were used in the cotton fields. University of Illinois professor of economics Deidre McCloskey wrote, Growing cotton, unlike sugar or rice, never required slavery. By 1870, freed men, that's freed slaves, and whites produced as much cotton as the South produced in the slave time of 1860. Now, how is that possible? If slaves built the cotton industry, forget that they didn't build America. They certainly helped build America, of course. I mean, how how could you deny that they played a role? But slaves built America? Blacks built America? I'll explain the reason for the lie, Blacks Built America, in a moment. But I just want you to try to memorize this piece of data. Just a few years after the Civil War, no more slaves, as much cotton was produced as 10 years earlier at the height of slavery. So is it not obvious you don't need slaves for cotton? Cotton, I'm continuing from this professor, cotton was not a slave crop in India or in southwest China where it was grown in bulk. That slaves produced cotton does not imply that they were essential or causal in its production. The United States and the United Kingdom and the rest of the world would have become just as rich without the 250 years of slavery. Wow. Wow. That's a complete refutation of the lie that black slaves built America. They have remained rich, observe, even after the peculiar institution, that is slavery, was abolished because their riches did not depend on its sinfulness, unquote. And I continue with my column, but one need not know anything about cotton to understand how false black slaves built America is. All you need is common sense. First, even if slavery accounted for much of the wealth of the South, the civil war that brought slavery to an end in the U.S. wiped out nearly all of that wealth and cost the Union billions in dollars, and yet it became a very wealthy country. Second, if slavery built the American economy, the most robust economy in world history, why didn't Brazil become an economic superpower? Brazil imported 4 million black slaves, about 12 times as many as America. We'll continue with the blacks... Black Slaves Built America Lie. I have wanted to write this column for years. And I finally did. It's out today. DennisPrager.com, TownHall.com. If you get it at DennisPrager.com, I ask you to please just click to subscribe and get my column each week. I work very hard on this for essentially no money. I look at my life like my Bible commentary as I make enough money to do very important work for no money. I've been blessed. The column and my Bible commentary are examples. And, and today's uh, today's column is uh, is an example of the important stuff: the slavery, the left, and truth. So you have no idea, unless you really monitor what your kid learns. Virtually every kid in an American public school, excuse me, American high school, private or public. 
and college learned slaves built America, black slaves, or blacks built America. They put it in different ways. So I'm dealing with that one in my column. Next argument against this idiocy, this lie. If slavery built the American economy, the most robust economy in world history, why didn't Brazil become an economic superpower? Brazil imported 4 million black slaves, about 12 times as many as America. Why did the slave-owning American South lag so far behind the North economically? Why did England, which though it played a major role in the transatlantic slave trade until the beginning of the 19th century, had almost no slaves, almost no slaves, a few thousand, yet became the most advanced economy of the 19th century? In fact, if you had slaves, the odds are you were poor. Russia, before the communist revolution, was a country of slavery, basically. They were called serfs. Not a very rich country, was it? Black slaves built America is left-wing propaganda to vilify America and to discredit capitalism. Period. That's all it is. That's all anything the left says is. Hatred of America and hatred of capitalism and hatred of liberty. That's it. Whatever they say that is not obviously true, like gravity pulls things to earth, whatever they say is not said because it's true. It's said it's because it advances an agenda. That's the point. You must remember. Blacks built America is not truth. Of course, blacks, I mean, could, every group built America. If you were to single out one group, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, and I'm a Jew telling you this. But that has nothing to do with white supremacy. It just has something to do with truth. Whites also built communism and Nazism. Okay. But we only blame whites for the bad they did and not for the and do not give them credit for the good that they did. But my agenda is not to tell you whites built America, it's to debunk the lie that slavery built America. And finally, America is systemically racist. This is the great left lie. Four million black people have emigrated to the United States since the 1960s, and tens of millions more would if they could. Are they all fools? Why would anyone move to a country that is systemically bigoted against them? Did any Jews emigrate to Germany in the 1930s? Blacks have emigrated to the United States because they know what Ayan Hirsi Ali, the black woman who fled her homeland of Somalia, and who now writes and lectures in America knows. Quote, what the media do not tell you is that America is the best place in the planet, on the planet, to be. Black, female, gay, trans, or what have you. That's right. That's correct. The left hates the best place ever invented. Because they're scum. Liberals are not scum. Liberals vote for scum. Why they do is a very, very complex question. Blacks emigrating to America know what Algerian writer Kamel Daoud, writing in Le Monde and Le Point, knows. It is forbidden to say that the West is also the place to which we flee. It's forbidden to say that the West is the place to which we flee when we want to escape the injustice of our country of origin, or dictatorship, or war, or hunger, or simply boredom. It is fashionable say that the West is guilty of everything. And finally, I write, as regards American slavery and everything else, always remember this. Truth is a liberal value, and truth is a conservative value. It is not a left-wing value. Please send this article to every young person you know. They don't know anything that I wrote in the piece. Nothing. Especially the numbers. 
That's what I want them to know, the numbers. Yes, all right, let's see here. Jim in Louisville, Kentucky, hello. Hey, Dennis, yeah, you took my point that uh, the, the the men who were captured in Central Africa and, and then put on a ship to Northern Africa to the Muslim Barbary Coast, those poor men were castrated, and if they survived that surgery, they went to work. So That's life right. in the Muslim right. slave life was much harder because the Americans much, much. Slaves That's got- right. And by the way, I'm sorry I'm cutting you off. I have to take a break. Many of them died, as you point out, from the castration. Dennis Prager here. Thanks for listening to the Daily Dennis Prager Podcast. To hear the entire three hours of my radio show, commercial-free, every single day, become a member of PragerTopia. You'll also get access to 15 years' worth of archives, as well as the daily show prep. Subscribe at PragerTopia.com.